In this video, I'm going to be talking about our first fish harvest. Hi everyone, if you're new, this is naturally a process. I would like to welcome you to Fuse Farm. It's been a long time, so I've been telling you we're newbies and we don't have experience. So after six months plus, we now harvested our fish. So in this video, I would like to share with you my experience. I'm going to be talking about the harvest in general, how the harvest went. This will include the sales on farm, and off farm off farm meaning the deliveries the lessons learned from our first harvest and probably the way forward like what we do after the sales maybe at the end of the video i'll be able to talk about um, some cash please stay tuned there are three things that we did the first one was to make sure that we take orders two months before we took orders from friends from family friends of friends workmates friends of friends of workmates because we were anxious we didn't know whether people were going to turn up at the farm we've seen from gurus like from a dr kachaka for him he sells on one day so i thought since i'm a newbie i need to set realistic expectations so we took orders numbers and blah 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 if everyone was to buy the fish according to the orders it meant that the whole pond was sold out but then those were pleasures right yeah the second thing we did was to test harvest the weekend before the harvest we did a test harvest just to see how prepared we were so during the test harvest we wanted to first of all test our fish and make sure that the um, people that matter in my life family people that have helped in this project test the fish first apart from checking the preparedness the test drive was also meant to um, harvest some fish for smoking i did some fish smoking lessons from a friend Smutale. so they are called smokehouse i'll put her link in the description down below because she's an amazing woman so we have a head and we started scaling it it was quite an experience with family you can see Auntie Mbololo was really being hilarious we were teaching Auntie Mbololo how to scale the fish and she was so scared but she got a hang of it <laughs> so we scaled the fish and we smoked it had some packed some people started buying the weekend before which was a good thing we thought the sales were actually going on well but we were still anxious for the day so we kept our fingers crossed hoping everyone who ordered confirms their orders so the third thing that we did before our harvest was to confirm our orders so the day before the harvest i started calling and texting all the people that had ordered fish and we found that quite a few people were responsive on the night before but on the day i think a quarter of people that had made orders confirmed their orders The first thing that we did on the first day of harvest was to go in around six in the morning, harvest the fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure the next question you would ask is what size was the fish? Average body weight was 300 grams. What that means is that when it's 300 grams, average body weight means some of it could be 250 and some of it could be 300 and others could be more than 300. So what we found was that on average, three fish could make a kg. Whatever we harvested, we packed because we had done orders and we had made small leaflets with names and where the person is coming from, including their numbers. Around 9 or 10, we dispatched two cars that were delivering. So we had a counter and we also had a rough fork. On the farm harvest was the one that was looking very slow because by 8 there was nobody, 9 there was nobody, 10 there was nobody, kind of what we expected and that is why we had planned to say we were going to have a partial harvest. Partial harvest is where you harvest and leave some. Huh? The partial harvest was meant to harvest only big fish and take back the smaller fish and then around 11 o'clock we just saw people starting to come and they were coming in groups people that we didn't expect to come that was an honor it was actually very emotional because we saw certain people that we didn't believe could come and be with us on our first harvest and most of the people were buying from 50 kgs 20 kgs 30 kgs 10 or less that made a difference we had overwhelming support we had put a poster by the roadside there are also some people that just saw the poster and they were coming on their own which was really nice because we did not advertise through paid media we advertised through social media youtube instagram my facebook page my sister's facebook page in fact my sister actually helped a lot because her she was even going live i'm not the type of person that goes live because i always believe whatever i post should be edited so i allowed my sister to go live on my phone by around 18 hours or six o'clock the fish was gone so people came they wanted to get some beach and we took in the people to go and have it and when they came out it came out like a no catch which was very disappointing and we thought maybe they didn't do it correctly they went in again there was nothing we were in denial because we didn't even have fish for ourselves and just like that the fish was gone and people started returning without any fish it was so 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 depressing imagine someone coming all the way from town our farm is like 30 kilometers from the post office and then when they reach they find the fish is gone it was so bad not only that for someone who wants to make money you see money go away i felt like crying but there was nothing we could do so people returned with their money and the fish was gone we didn't even have anything for home the smoked fish was also selling at the same time as we were selling uh, the fresh fish and even on the day we were still smoking so a few people bought some smoked fish but we didn't do a good job advertising the smoked fish but people bought and we didn't manage to sell everything so what we did with the smoked fish we just kept it at home and put it in the freezer later on the people that tasted the smoked fish on the day of sale they started coming back for more apparently they were saying the fish was very tasty eventually all the smoked fish was gone a few days later we started getting calls of people wanting 1000 kgs of fish that's like almost the whole pond looking at our pond sizes huh? it was kind of depressing where you start thinking i should have done more to have more fish but 
I think it's baby steps. So market is there as long as you make sure you get yourself out there. Don't be scared of social media. Don't be scared of Facebook. Don't be scared of Instagram. Don't be scared of YouTube. I know some people say there's a lot of bad things that happen on social media, but you can use it to your advantage. I think most of the people that we got, we got from social media. And very thankful on behalf of Fuse Farms to all our customers. Friends really, really came to support us and I have no words to express my gratitude. So the plan was that when we fell to finish selling on the first day, actually we didn't even plan to sell on the, everything on the first day. So the plan was that the following day we do another harvest now for the second batch for people from my office, my husband's office. But because the fish finished on the same day, we couldn't honor the orders. And it was so unfortunate because you no know, people don't take you serious when you don't honor their agreements. So now we had to start calling people to apologize and because there's no way again you can retain someone who has traveled 30 kilometers to come and buy to say someone ordered so it was very very difficult so we prioritize people that came on farm i think it made business sense so for most of you that want to go into fish farming you would agree with me to say i think it's better for you to sell on farm because one you don't spend on fuel you also don't spend on the handling of the fish in general so we really did appreciate the people that came on farm so that's it about the sales the lessons learned so what we learned from the sale, the harvest, the deliveries and the on-farm sale was that it's actually more profitable for you to sell on farm because you limit the wastage. I'm saying so because um, some of the deliveries, the deliveries I showed you earlier on that went in the morning, not everything was delivered. We made losses from deliveries actually yeah we did i am not going to hide that fact from you because if you're going to go into it you need to know this you're better off selling on farm than making deliveries here's the reason why you shouldn't prioritize deliveries when the fish is live of course we made mistakes as well as newbies first mistake we made was we didn't have ice in our heads we thought since the fish was alive and since it takes long to die it was going to reach the owners still breathing and kicking and everything because from our test harvest the fish that we got from the farm to home took a very long time to die we still had it in water the following day it was still alive so hmm, fish takes long to die but we were wrong because the cars that were going to deliver the fish were going to be moving in the sun and the way we tied it there was no water in the plastics it was just tied because it was a help that was delivering and some people would tell this person to say no i'm at the function they were at church apparently they forgot that they had made fish orders so please come later so our help would leave that destination and go to further destinations to deliver some more fish there so the fish did some cross country and it was a, an extremely hot day and at the end of the day there are some people four or five people that stopped picking their calls that fish went bad we didn't have a cold room of course as a newbie you wouldn't have a cold room but at least you could invest in ice but we didn't do that so we kept it for ourselves because we believed it was not fresh enough so now we thought if this fish is arriving here around 19 and it's not very fresh it means all the deliveries that were made after 18 hours must be stale as well 
So we started calling now. Everyone who received their fish late. Thankfully, most people said their fish was okay, but there were a few people that said some of it was fresh and some of it was stale. Instead of refunding, we have to resupply them with the fish. Good thing it, it wasn't big orders and we really did appreciate that feedback unlike someone just keeps it to themselves because at the end of the day next time we're selling they're going to say those people don't sell fresh fish make sure that the fish is frozen if not buy ice and put it in ice so that you preserve it for the longest time than what we did we learned the hard way but all the same it wasn't bad i can still encourage someone new to go into it It was really nice seeing people getting excited about getting live fish and they were picking the sizes that they wanted. We'll talk about the way forward. The way forward is we are going to expand from the sales of the first pond. You get your money back on the first harvest. So what business would give you your money back in six months? I think fish farming is a good project. It's not so labor intensive, but what you need to know is there's too much demand for water. You really, really need to make sure that you have a lot of water. The other thing that you need to know is the feed. The feed is also quite expensive depending on the type of feed that you're using. I am not going to talk about feeds right now. <laughs> we'll talk about it probably in the next video. Uh, yeah, so the other thing, starting fish farming that is expensive expensive apart from water uh, pond liners so you need to choose between using the strongest pond liners or the weakest pond liners so if you want to know the details about choosing the pond liners and how to start fish farming please refer to my earlier video on how to start fish farming i'm going to link it above here and the best thing you can do is to go for training yourself you need to learn the bits and bulbs of fish farming if you are really willing to go through the training please check in the description down below I'm going to give you numbers and I'm also going to give you the numbers of people that have helped us thank you very much for watching this video I know you want to hear detail about the finances what we made from this we are going to talk about this probably in the next video I hope you've really found this video helpful if you have please give it a like make sure you share with those that are looking for information on fish farming and make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification button so that you don't miss a thing whenever i do videos so bye see you in the next video